However, we have uh, Sarah Massengale with us this morning. It's our Dead County Extension, and uh, we had Rachel last week, uh, last month, That's and fun. she did a great job. Great. You know, had some very interesting information and talking a little bit about very good nutrition and how we can do that. Very good. Mm -hmm. I mean, she good. really had some neat ideas. And mm -hmm. if you uh, have interest in some of the things that she does, you can actually get her programs there online. They, they are. We're switching a lot right now, right? That's kind mm -hmm. of the safest way, smaller groups or online. So a lot of our programs are going online for now, which I know can be hard with internet access or but we'll you know try to adapt and work as much as possible to make sure everybody can access what they're looking for but um, the benefit of some of those online programs is that we were just talking about that mm -hmm. that we can access programs that used to only be offered in Kansas City or north up uh, northern Missouri that you know we would have either had to pay for a speaker to drive all the way down here or you know you would have had to drive all the way up there so we're accessing a lot more content than we used to be able to and taking advantage of all our specialists that are all over the state now so um, there's some benefits to that it's mm -hmm. you know it's not the same and there's definitely still some programs that once we kind of get past all of this the the pandemic will you know be ready to get back to in person and a lot of hands-on things like the 4-h but for now you know we're everybody's adapting and so that's where we are too trying to you know do the best we can yeah. in these adapting situations. the best we can I, yep. you hear that a lot but it's it's the truth we are mm -hmm. and the thing is too sarah we, we're all having to learn mm -hmm. you know a lot a little bit about these different things and instead of I think people waiting, you know, if you're something you need to know mm -hmm. from the extension, a lot of people can go just online and then they right. can start digging it up. Mm -hmm. Why didn't call the office and then you guys would say, wait a minute, we got something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's available. It's online. Here, go check that out. Right. Yeah. And then we're still there in the office. So you can mm -hmm. always call, you know, you can stop by. You can't really come in our office. We have, you know, kind of a divider up now, but you know, you can ask brick questions, wall. <laughs> brick wall. <laughs> little window. No, um, but you know, just, um, you know, stop by or give us a call and we will help you find what you need. Mm -hmm. Um, I was going to mention one of the new programs that started Monday night was our neighborhood leadership I'm Academy. Just bring that up. Uh -huh. Yeah. Which is really cool because, um, leadership Phelps County, which was a program that's been going on for 15 years up there in Rollin Phelps County. They had been looking at doing a program, kind of restarting that program. They'd taken a couple of years off. But obviously with the pandemic, we couldn't do the in-person, you know, face-to-face -face the way we normally have done. So Neighborhood Leadership Academy has been running in St. Louis for about right. 15 time, or 18 yeah. years, a long time. And they have over 300 graduates, a really solid program, great instructors. And so we were able to offer that program, again, statewide with local cohorts. So we have folks from Dent County, Phelps, Crawford and Mary's and Miller County that are all participating. Mm -hmm. So we're sort of calling it the East Central Merrimack region. Okay. And so the idea is that we're, um, it's Monday nights for about three hours, which I'm gonna, I learned I'm going to have to take a nap Monday afternoons before I to stay up till <laughs> 9 o'clock. Oh, 6 to 9. 6 then, to I 9, think. yeah. So, But it's great because um, we do a lot. It, it's via Zoom. So, again, like a new technology. It's it, The first night we were kind of working through all the kinks and getting everybody up to speed on how to sure. use that. But we got to connect with um, – Leader, new leaders, experienced leaders from around the state. There's groups from St. Louis, Northwest, down in Springfield, so all over. And the idea is that we're doing, um, you know, some parts of that three hours together where we're hearing from speakers or, um, you know, learning the pieces together. Then we do little breakout sessions on Zoom. It's like amazing. Just our area. Just our area mm -hmm. so that we get to learn and network with each other. And we're hoping maybe, um, you know, in later October and November, we can actually do a couple of face-to-face -face events with our local group to kind of, again, just it, it's the networking that's so important mm -hmm. with a lot of leadership development. And so, but it was really fun Monday night. We um, heard from a woman that had graduated from NLA in um, uh, like three or four years ago, and she's gone on, she's run for office. She opened now, she has a co-working space. So for folks that used to... Um, or that are starting a new business but can't afford a full-out store, right. they can sort of have a little office or space to start their business mm -hmm. that's shared, and it reduces costs. So she's facilitating that. So the idea of Neighborhood Leadership Academy is to build individual leadership skills. We do Clifton Strengths Assessment, which is a really great personal leadership um, tool. And then there's also the networking and community building so that you learn how to work in groups and communities, how to start a project, how to recruit volunteers, work with local officials. And then at the end of the project, each of the participants has to have um, maybe not completed, but at least started planning and getting ready to do a community um, improvement project. So, you know, it could be anything. It could be, um, you know, starting an after school program, mm -hmm. something big like that, mm -hmm. or just even, you know, starting a little park or um, 
planting flowers somewhere, help, you know, all kinds of different community projects. So the benefit, again, of this program is that we're building this statewide leadership network. And hopefully once this is all kind of settled down and we can do a conference in person, all of those leaders can get together in one place and network and, and meet. Um, but for now, we're doing these local cohorts. So we're still getting that local component of leadership and building our leadership pipeline. You know, these folks will be able to take on roles in school boards, run for their office, yeah, just yeah. be on a volunteer group, you know, so they'll be increasing their skills. And that's what we need in our communities, especially right now when um, everything's changing. And People we need don't volunteer leaders. right now very no. much. It's hard, right? Yeah. But And it's so different. Everything's changing. So we need to help leaders be prepared for that. It's going to be changing and different for, for a while now. Sure. So we have to, you know, think through how we do that as a leader. So, so yeah, so it's kind of a neat program to be trying and trying something new right now. And one of the um, interesting things about listening to that is that you get different opinions, especially when it's a statewide, mm -hmm. is when you listen to other people that you think, well, these problems are only in our neighborhood. They're not no. only mm -hmm. in your neighborhood. They're in other neighborhoods. But you'd be amazed how many different pe different ways people go about trying to eliminate that mm -hmm. problem. I mean, right. so it's not just there's not one answer and one solution for every problem. There may be five different solutions for that problem. It's just which direction do you want to go? Right. Uh, is, are you trying to do this in a long term or short term? I mean, there are a lot of different things that come up in discussion. Mm -hmm. And uh, getting together uh, with people, uh, yeah, hopefully that's going to be coming up in a couple of months or maybe even three months or four months down the road. But... That's when a lot of times people will actually learn something where it's a little bit harder to do it on the line because somebody hears something and it stirs their interest. They don't get a chance to see that person again afterwards. Mm -hmm. Grant you, they can still probably access them, right. but it's not personal. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. sometimes people would rather just talk to somebody one on one, right. which that's the interpersonal part of mm -hmm. these these organizations, which really make things take off that is missing right now. Mm -hmm. But hopefully if you get involved, start getting some of these ideas and move forward, you can still get involved, right? Mm -hmm. Even though you missed the first one, right? Yep, we could still probably sign you up. Um, <clears throat> probably by next week would be the cutoff for this one because um, the part about this is that when the participants complete this program and they have to do eight of ten sessions and finish the project, they get a chancellor certificate from the University of Missouri-St. Louis. So, you know, that would be a good resume Thing, add thing to add to your resume, sure. um, sort of a credential if you're running for office or something to be able to highlight that you made the effort to do this program. Um, so yeah, but if you've missed this one, but you still want to get involved, there's some other leadership things coming up in okay. February and March this coming year. Okay. We're going to do a program called, we're going we're gonna to sort of tweak it a little bit and call it Missouri LeaderCast. So I don't know if you've ever heard of LeaderCast. It's a um, one-day online um, like inspirational motivational speakers and normally Phelps County has done it um, up in Rolla it's usually in May hmm. and they get all that they stream live all of these nationally known um, renowned leadership speakers so we were planning to do that this year in May you know they had to cancel hmm. that so we're going to tweak it a little bit and do it like a book club but it'll be a video club so each hmm. you'll sign up it's a four-week program and you'll watch every week we'll release about an hour and a half of these leadership speakers. So you'll listen to, um, and I'm, oh, I've lost the names right now, but there's some, you know, people that you would know. Um, Andy Stanley is one as a name. So they do little like 20 to 30 minute, um, motivational, um, speeches. And then on Thursday mornings from eight 30 to nine 30, we'll have a, again, a zoom, but to discuss that. And what does that mean for us in Missouri, in our local areas? And then, um, so again, it's sort of a different way to build some leadership. Um, instead of sitting in person and listening to these great speakers, we'll be able to think, you know, do a little bit more facilitated discussion about it. And what does that mean for us mm -hmm. in Missouri? And the fourth session, so the three are the leader cast program. And the fourth sure. session, we're going to be um, adding in some Missouri speakers about how they're dealing right now with all this change. How do you lead when everything's constantly different? Yeah. And so how do we apply those lessons in our organizations and our personal lives or businesses? So kind of a different, we're trying some different approaches to thinking about leadership this year. So anyway, so that one, we're just about to get re that ready to advertise, but um, that'll be February, March. We're thinking wow. ahead. So yeah, well, you almost have to anymore. <laughs> right. and, and we, who knows what's going to be like in February, mm -hmm. March of next year, right. you know, maybe we'll have a great vaccine and everybody will be somewhat yeah. back to normal. I so. But I don't yeah. think anything's ever going to get back to the way it truly was even just 10 months ago. Yep. I, don't, I don't think you're going to see that again, mm -hmm. um, at least not the way it was. Yeah, maybe a very 
you know, I think if once this all calms down and maybe two or three or four years afterwards, it may get back closer to mm-hmm. that, but it's going to take quite some time for the healing to get through. Right. But you um, know what? And that's maybe okay for us to have sort of a new normal. Maybe there's some things we've learned. I think mm-hmm. about, um, you know, right when the pandemic closed everything down, you were seeing all these stories, you know, even in Salem, we had that neighbor to neighbor mm-hmm. Facebook page. People mm-hmm. were really helping each other out. You know, in Italy, people were playing music from their homes, all kinds of really neat community things. And I think we've seen, I'm a community development person, so I'm always like (laughs) keeping an eye out for that, right? But we've seen how that's been really important right now, checking on your neighbors, cheering people up. Um, You know, the library did the, there's chalk art and pictures in the window, and all that kind of stuff that that's really important. And I think that we've seen how valuable that is. The sales tax in Dent County has gotten, you know, has done well. That's not the case in other places. Most places aren't. So, you know, that buy local thing, I think that we weren't, it wasn't so easy to run up to other places and shop. So we've stayed local and we need to think about that. Like, think, you know, how that has helped support our, support our businesses and our county to stay, you know, kind of stay stable during this difficult time. So. But as you're bringing a business, Mm -hmm. we all know that a lot of businesses were, were hurt by this. There's a lot of restaurants Mm -hmm. uh, were limited to only carry out and some are still only doing carry Mm -hmm. out. Others uh, had to shut down. Right. Totally. Uh, Mm -hmm. Trying to get back small businesses that Mm -hmm. were, uh, you know, I always say if if I'm a business owner and you call me non-essential, that doesn't make me happy. Right. You know, Mm -hmm. because they shut me down. Right. Uh, Non-essential businesses were closed. And a lot of those, as we well know, in the United States, a lot of those people have not even tried to come back. And and it's just too hard. It is. Because you've been off. Even though they gave you these wonderful programs to help pay for employees and help do other things. Sarah, you as well as, as well as anybody else knows, once you shut the doors for an extended period of time, it's really hard to get them back open hard. again and get that foot traffic back in, yeah. especially when you're limited to Not. social distancing mm-hmm. and only allowing so many people in per square foot and, and all these formulas that came out. And it's, it, it had to scare business owners. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I know all of us here at the station, you know, we were an essential business, so it didn't really affect us. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, we don't just live at the radio stage. We have right. to go out in other places. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you, I've been to St. Louis dealing with my father's trust and things of that nature to where it was a ghost town. Mm-hmm. Literally, everything was shut down. And it, it really is kind of scary. You know, mm-hmm. You're thinking, oh, wait, you know, there's nobody on the road. Uh, if there's nobody on the road, there's nobody out these businesses right. keeping them going. So. Right. And that has been a hard, it, for sure, it's been difficult. And mm-hmm. um, it's going to take some, you know, time and investment and um, sort of some new ways of doing things. And, you know, with Extension, we do have our small business development centers right. and our business counselors. And they're still available, you know, to help you think through what's next. Um, you know, how do you adapt your current business? How think might you outside the something? box is what think they help outside you do, the, right? Yes, exactly. And how to think through hiring and dealing with employees. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, thinking through dif- different funding streams or in- revenue streams. Um, so we have we have a really great counselor up in Rala and a team um, around the state. So, you know, depending what your need is with your business, um, you can you know give us a call at the office, 729-3196. Mm-hmm. And we can connect you to those business counselors to help you um, get some of the, you know, get some ideas, thinking through some of the strategies you might use. So, All right. A couple things real quick. Yeah. Obviously, um 4-H and FFA Livestock Auction, again, sets another record this year. That's amazing, a, yeah. right? <laughs> I mean, it, it pretty well is. Uh, we all miss Linda Sheldon at yeah. 4-H, but, again, we want to credit everybody who filled in to help uh, get the, all all that done over there. And it's, it's still pretty amazing how we were able to get this off with, right. with uh, COVID-19 mm-hmm. and um, really had a, a tremendous sale. But I know a lot of people are concerned about 4-H and what's going to happen because sign-ups start in October. We're not. They do. You right. know, my gosh, that's not that far away, Sarah. Right. So <laughs> we do have um, the position that Linda had, the youth program associate, mm-hmm. is open right now when we're taking applications. I think right now you might want to take a look. The application is currently due tomorrow at the end of the day. Wow, that's pretty quick. It is pretty quick. <laughs> but I think we might extend it just so we have a you know solid pool. So if you're interested, um, you can look at the University of Missouri Extension Careers website for the job announcement or give us a call and we can email you the job description. Um, And the application is all online. So, um, you know, kind of, you can fill it out right there. Um, So if you're interested in that, yeah, take a look real quick and um, we we might extend the um, application period, but yeah, we're really looking for somebody that's willing to be flexible. This job is going to be a little bit different than the way Linda had done it. Um, it, First of all, it's going to be full-time 40 hours a week. So we'll have um, full benefits. 
Um, and then 4-H is changing. <laughs> Everything's changing, right? But 4-H is changing a little bit. So we're going to be adding, with that additional time, um, we'll still have the traditional 4-H clubs. You know, we have really strong sure. clubs here. But we're also going to be thinking through ways that we can do new things. So eventually when schools are back to normal, we'll probably be thinking about after-school programs. Is there in-school programs we could help do? Um there is a lot of online now. So there's a program called 4-H online okay. and um, 4-H at home. I'm sorry, I have the wrong 4-H at home. So if you want to be involved in 4-H but don't feel comfortable getting out to one of our clubs, they have all kinds of videos and STEM activities. You can buy kits to do the projects at home. So there's a lot of ways. We're really trying to extend our reach so that mm -hmm. we make sure any right. kid that wants to can be part of 4-H, even if the traditional model doesn't right. work. So there's a lot of new things happening. So we're looking for someone that's willing to... Um, you know, th like you said, think outside the box, try new things, um, work as a team. We're a really good team in our office, and we're looking for someone that's willing to, um, you know, be part of that and pitch right. in. So, yeah, it's, it's a new opportunity. We definitely miss Linda, but, um, you know, we're ready for what's next. So, And one of the key ingredients about uh, the new p position is, is really you're going to be walking into some uncharted territory because, sure. you know, I mean, Linda was great with a hands-on 4-H, and that's still going to be around, guys. Mm -hmm. and, and really, it's so key in, to, to the development of our children to get that interaction with other kids. Yes, that's still all going to be around. But like Sarah's mentioning, there's going to be some other things that you can do outside that mm -hmm. interaction with those kids that um, might not even be available in our area except by Zoom or, mm -hmm. or through the 4-H. And so why not take a look and see see the new things coming in because it really yeah. is going to make it even better. Yes, we're still going to have our firearm. We're still going to have yep. we're still going to have all a lot of, a lot of great things going on. I'm not sure about the camps next year at this time. I don't think anybody would. We're going to wait and, and yeah, wait yeah, and see. Yeah, have to so, wait and mm -hmm. see. Yeah, wait and wait. You know, right. it's just kind of what we do. We just wait and we yeah. wait and then we wait and then we wait. Mm -hmm. um, but sooner or later, everything's going to start to calm back down. But keep your eye on it. And uh, again, if you're interested in that position. Sarah says it's kind of you're going to have to kind of react pretty quick, you know. Yeah. So and you know it's a I love working for extension because we get to be connected to the university, so you're always learning, and that's the whole point of extension is to mm -hmm. always always be learning, helping our communities. It's learn. an arm. It's the arm. It's of an the arm. It's right? exactly right. We are the, an arm of the university, so um, it's a really neat place to work. A lot of good benefits. Um, so take a look if you're interested. On a side note, one last thing I wanted to kind of throw out too is that we. Um, we're getting close. I say that we're we're still a ways out, but we're starting to think about recruiting new extension council members for the 2021 year. Our elections usually right at the beginning of January, so this is the time where we start putting a bug in people's ear about you know think about joining mm -hmm. extension count running for extension council, what the benefits are, um, and so we'll be putting word out soon about recruiting candidates. So extension council is our local. Um, governing body that helps us identify needs right. in the community, help you know support and manage our office. And so um, we really want to have um, representatives from every part of the community. So it's not just about 4-H or livestock. We want business owners, mm -hmm. parents, you name it. We want people, we want to make sure we're reaching everybody that we can in Dent County. So there's a lot of stuff with 4-H going on. So, it yeah, it really helps. And, and with the Extension Council, they, they were always are looking for something to make it better mm -hmm. for our, our local people. And, of course, John and all them are, do a tremendous job, and we really appreciate that. I'm just speaking, I'll backtrack just a moment on that. I think one of your press releases you sent out to me about soil testing, the soil tests were way up this year. We did. You know, which is great. Yeah. And the soil tests are still available. You can still get all that You can done. do it anytime, right? And somebody said, well, how do I get my soil test? Well, you can go online. That's an easy way, and they'll mm -hmm. tell you exactly how to do it. You can mail, mail it off, and, mm -hmm. to, and they can get it all tested for you and send it back. It really isn't very difficult to do, is it? Nope, not at all. And if you want to, you can now we are bringing it back to our office. Right. So if you want to come, um, we have a soil probe to help dig up the, the right amount of dirt. Um, you know, we have an instruction packet at the office mm -hmm. or you can get it online. Um, but yeah, when you bring that to us, you what what happens is they analyze your soil and they tell you if you need lime or Tassian, whatever. Lime, yeah, right. Yeah, mm -hmm, and the benefit of that is that it can save you money rather than just going out and buying a bag of whatever and throwing it on. You really know what your soil needs so you can save money instead of spending a lot on something that you don't really need in your soil. So and by fertilizer that you got plenty of already. Right. <laughs> right. So yeah. So it's That's a really good more. way. Yeah. <laughs> and we can do those for um, pastures, lawns mm -hmm. and gardens. Um, yeah. And you know, now, so thinking of the garden side, lawn side, now would start to be a good time, you know, um, get, you could put stuff on for the winter and let it sit. So we're about at the end of getting to the end of 
while gardening season. So, um, so community garden this year, huh? I mean, it was, it was pretty rough year, wasn't it? Yeah, it didn't really, we had a couple of people out there, but really, um, COVID kind of shut it down. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that this fall, we're going to really be taking a look at the, what the need is for a community garden and maybe rethinking how that works out there. That space is fantastic. And the church has been a wonderful partner sure. and there's a lot of, um, great, inf you know, there's water there. So it's a great spot. Um, but it, we're maybe rethinking if we need the community garden the way it's been. Maybe we need to rethink how we do that. So, um, yeah, it's been a kind of a rough year there. <laughs> well, nobody's supposed to get near anybody. And yeah. for mm -hmm. a whole month of March and into April, when a lot of that community garden, mm -hmm. that's the, the key months to right. get things started, Yeah, nobody was going out. We did yeah. a lot of cover crops yeah. this year just yeah. to kind of keep it from getting too weedy. So. Yeah, but definitely uh, if there's something you're interested in, though, give Sarah a call and let yeah. her know, and then they, they, they can stay in contact Right, we're looking for new partners. You know, if there's an idea somebody has about growing food in our community that you know, doesn't have to be a community garden, we can think through what mm -hmm. that would look like. So if you, yeah, if you have ideas or are interested in partnering, let me know. We'll figure something out. So. All right, very good. This is the kind of time of year, though, people are talking about hay testing. Yes. Uh, I, I'm assuming John's getting calls on that, right? Yeah, we've been doing a lot of hay tests, too, this mm -hmm. year. So I don't know anything about that besides that we do it. And <laughs> John um, does. John does. So, <laughs> yeah, you can call our office or give John a call and um, or email, and he can um, either tell you how to do it or come out and help you get it done. Um, but, yeah, but that's a good one, too, to make sure that what you're feeding or pre preparing to feed your cattle for the winter is um, good quality and has the right mix of nutrients. So. We've had such good rain and things. I know people are probably maybe even thinking about one more hay season in <laughs> because if it gets hot again and uh -huh. we after we get this rain and, and yep. you know, if we get some more rain, we may mm -hmm. have. Yeah, that'd be Who good. Who knows, you know, right. uh, maybe one more. But definitely want to know what the, the, the content of your hay is and mm -hmm. make sure it's, it's got the nutrients that your your livestock are going to need. So right. you definitely mm -hmm. want to make sure of that. Yeah. Very good. Anything right. else that you got? Well, uh, um, pass on? so just always, you know, we have our Facebook page, Dent mm -hmm. County Extension. And now, um, you know, there are lots of other you can look at. Um, there's a the Small Business Development Center has a page, sure. just University of Missouri Extension. We try to share all those things on ours. But so ours is the main one. Check that out. And we keep it updated every day. Um, we do have an email newsletter we're trying to start up to do once a month with pro upcoming programs. So if you're interested in being on that list, let us know and we can um, add you to the email list. Okay. Um, yeah, so just, I mean, we're still rolling and doing new things and staying busy, helping to serve our communities. So it just looks a little different. But again, if you have ideas mm -hmm. or needs in the community that we can address through extension, we're always um, welcome, you want to hear those ideas. So. Well, we kind of missed the extension for a few months there while we had the COVID. But well, we, we were yeah. still <laughs> operating just from home. Right, so it well, was kind I'm, of, but I meant, you know, everything was everything shut was down. Shut it down. wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't just you guys yep. i mean it mm -hmm. was everybody and and it does it just changes everything it you does. know the perspective mm -hmm. of what people have but the your extension is alive and well we are uh seven two nine three one nine six give them a call and they're still in the judicial building they haven't moved nope come <laughs> they, come they, see they, us they, but call us if you don't want to climb the stairs we'll yeah, meet you downstairs right so. yeah mm -hmm. that is a nice nice hefty yeah, climb it's uh, a good exercise keeps you in good shape that's though. for sure yeah <laughs> no doubt about it yep. well sarah thanks for coming thanks, in spending Dan. some time with us and if you have any questions or her something or you want to talk about that the uh, neighborhood program that mm -hmm. just started monday night you definitely want to get in touch with sarah now yep. this week because you really don't want to miss any more of those no. eight out of ten you already missed one so yep. you got to be there it's a good program so <laughs> yeah yeah pretty okay. good idea very good All right, thank thanks. you again for thank coming you. in and spending some time with us sarah massingale from our Dent county extension